What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Birdo. I'm so glad to be back and making these videos. It's been a while because I've been trying to uh, settle in with my new schedule. I have a lot of things coming up this, well, currently now in this second trimester. But now I'm back and making these videos. And today we're going to talk about discrete input and output modules and analog input output modules. See what's the difference between that. And then we're going to talk about the basic principles of binary systems. You won't learn that in one day, I promise you. <laughs> I've tried doing that myself, but at least you'll get some kind of exposure to it. And so, please enjoy this first part of the video. Discrete input and output modules are going to only understand two states, which is 0 or 1, off or on. And the way that works is that once it reaches to the peak of 24 volts, I'm using that as an example, that is going to be the on state, one. But once it reaches down to zero, or the off state, that is going to be off state zero. So that's going to be your binary. One, on, zero, off. And that's discrete input and output modules. Pretty basic. Most PLCs are like that. But to the advanced level, you have analog input output modules. Now the way that works is that it can go from a range. Think of it as a light switch. We went from on or off, now we're going from a range of getting brighter. And it can read from zero volts to 24 volts. So it can go in between 12 volts. It can go below zero to negative 24 volts, etc. And you can use this for measurements for different operation. They can also control different actuations by either voltage or current reading. So let's take this for an example. You have a water tank and you want to put a chemical like chlorine, all right? When the water level is at a zero or below, it's only going to get a zero volt reading. But if it's on midway, you'll get a 12 volt reading. And, that will, and you can put that as your input, say, once it reaches 12 volts, start your chemical. Put in the chemical, chlorine, and it'll put it in. Usually you can use a sensor for that case. And that's basically it. You'd be learning between the discrete and analog basic principles, how they work. Now I'm going to teach you guys how binary system works. So I hope you guys enjoyed the first part of the video. Now we're going to get into the binary system. Now every one of us know about our decimal systems. One, two, three, four, five, six, 100, etc. And we live we live by it, basically. It's our way of measuring things, like this table. You know, this could be about, what, three feet? But for a PLC, and these advanced PLCs called PACs and computers, they do not understand one, two, three, four, five, six. They only understand two states that I said in the previous part of the first part, of zero and one, on or off. This helps the processor to understand and determine your commands when you program. It can also help out with memory, and we'll discuss that later on in the next videos. And they also help locate your inputs and outputs, see what's actuated or unactuated. So it's on, it's one, it's off, it's zero. And they also give values to your inputs and outputs so they can tell what's different from each other. And so now on this next segment of the video, you're going to see that I'm going to be talking about the binary system. I'm going to just show you all the basic principles of just the binary base of two. This way you can have an understanding of how they both work. And you also notice that I have hexadecimals and octal. I will not discuss that in this video because it does take time to actually get your mind around it. So we will discuss that on my next video. But now, please enjoy this next video about binary systems. So each one is called a bit, like I said. But then you go to four, and that's called a nipple. Then you go to eight bits, which is called a byte or eight bits. And then you go to 16 of these bits, which is called a word. And each one of these bits has a numerical value. When you come down here, you'll see two to the power of zero. And it's equal to 1. 2 to the power of 1 is equal to 2. 
2 to the power of 3 is equal to 4. 2 to the power of 4 is equal to 8. This helps out, like I said, the processor to understand your commands. It also gives your memory and gives value. Now, we go all the way to the tenth bit, or to the power of 2 and 3 11. And that, and I stopped there because it continues to keep growing. But now let's talk about how the binary system works. So we'll start off with 0, then we go to 1, then go to 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. And each one is representing a decimal number right here. So 0 equals to 0 binary. 1 equals to the 1 binary. 2 decimal equals to 1, 0 binary. And you're mostly starting off in this position right here on the first bit. And how do you keep adding this? It's quite simple. You start with 0. Then you put plus one, and you get one, one decimal. Then you keep adding another one, but this time it's going to equal to zero. One plus one, zero. You carry one above, and you imagine it as an imaginary zero, and you get one zero, which is decimal two, number two, or binary one zero. And the way I learned it, you can do it by the finger. Method. 0, 1, 2, 4, 8. So there are two types of people in this world. So we do it. Now, as you keep on adding, it's all going to the base of 2. But once you reach the 15, you're using all four of those bits. And now you have to carry this to the place of the 16th bit. Or, right here, this spot. So that was the basic principles of understanding the binary system. I hope y'all now y'all have an exposure of it. And like I said, we're going to talk about hexadecimals and octal next week. And I'm going to have a special guest showing us how to use the PLC system, more specifically the Omron PLC, CP1L. And he's going to be showing us some motor controls as well. So thanks again for watching my videos. I appreciate it and hope y'all can share and like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next week.